Hey Google, what's the Turing test? According to Wikipedia, the Turing test developed by Alan Turing in 1950 is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human. Let's get started. Hey, what's up guys and welcome to yet another video. My name is Chris and let's talk about Google Assistant. Uh, in fact, let's talk about artificial intelligence as a whole in relation to what we saw at Google I.O. 2018 a few days ago, a new feature that's being added to Google Assistant and it's called Google Duplex. So the event came and passed and Google as usual is putting all the weight on software and artificial intelligence. And we knew that this year Google will add crazy AI features to the Google ecosystem and Google knew that we knew that they would and Google didn't disappoint. So in general there were crazy new features announced for Google Lens, Google Maps, we saw new gestures for Android P, which I'll probably make a whole video about. Let me know if you want that in the comment section. And a lot of crazy stuff all around, but the pick of the bunch was obviously Google Duplex. To put it simply, Google Duplex is a feature that's being added to Google Assistant, the already very great and awesome Google Assistant, that will enable the Assistant to have a natural human-like conversation with another real human being. And it's so good with all the intonations and undertones and stuff like that, that the human on the other end will not be able to tell that they're actually speaking to a robot. Let's take a look at this. Hello, oh, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. So that is pretty crazy. And the hairdresser on the other end of the conversation couldn't actually tell that she was actually speaking to a robot. The whole idea here is to mimic a real human personal assistant actually trying to book a haircut appointment for their client. And Google Assistant actually straight up nailed it. The ability to respond to follow-up and sometimes awkward questions that were asked by the human being was incredible. The intonations and undertones from the Google Assistant are so human-like. Just listen to this once again. Mm-hmm. Mind-blowing. And for me, this thing has passed the Turing test. I know a lot of people are thinking it's too early to call it, but I'm calling it right here, right now on my predication. Google Duplex has passed the Turing test. Look, this thing has made a phone call, booked a haircut appointment, answered follow-up questions even when the appointment wasn't going to plan, and still managed to book an appointment within the designated time frame. And all this time, the hairdresser on the other end of the conversation couldn't tell that she was speaking to a robot. That's the Turing test passed right there. So at the event, Google made another demo that depicted a scenario where you're asking your personal assistant, you're probably your human personal assistant, to book a reservation for you at a restaurant on a certain date. But this time it was Google Assistant doing the job. And here's how the conversation went. See how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. Uh, seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people? When? Um, Today, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually we leave here for like, upper like 5 people. For people, for people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. You, you you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye bye. Wow. So this is obviously some. Crazy stuff. I think we can all agree on that. And the reactions to this have fallen into two main camps. 
The first camp is for nerds and tech enthusiasts like us YouTubers who think this is absolutely brilliant stuff and you think that the engineers and programmers down at Silicon Valley have done a great job. Then in the same camp you also have users who just love bleeding edge tech and they can actually foresee a future of AI where robots will be driving our cars, driving Ubers, teaching in classrooms and stuff like that. So one camp is pretty excited about this. The second camp is the conservative privacy concerned, human interaction promoting, Samantha hating, technophobic people whose main concern with Google Duplex is that you can't actually distinguish whether you're talking to a human being or a robot. The artificial intelligence we've had the past couple of years has been uh, pretty straightforward with Google Assistant, Siri and Alexa where you ask simple arithmetic or even a bit more complicated arithmetic questions, you get answers for those. You ask about the traffic, the weather, you get answers, ask about uh, the nearest barber shop, you get answers for that. Ask about the nearest restaurant, you get answers for that. But all this time, you know very well that you're speaking to a robot, and that's been okay. But Google Duplex is changing the game. Google Duplex is actually going a step further, making phone calls to your favorite restaurant, booking reservations, and the person on the other end of the conversation cannot actually tell whether they're speaking to a robot or a human being. That's where the concern is. Like, where do we draw the line with artificial intelligence? Like, is it, is it safe anymore to have artificial intelligence so smart that you cannot actually tell whether you're speaking to a robot or a human being? Is it safe? True story, about two weeks ago I was watching soccer on my couch, so my phone started buzzing and when I checked, it was a foreign number. So I picked up and I had this. This is an automated PayPal call. Please enter your PayPal password. It sounded like an automated system, but then again it sounded kind of like a human. I wasn't sure. But so I hung up, I wasn't gonna give my password away to anybody. So it didn't matter to me so much at that point, but it got me thinking, especially after watching the Google I.O. and watching Google Duplex. Someone else could have easily given away their password in that situation because they were so used to talking to automated systems when you call the bank and call these companies, these tech savvy companies. Most of the time you get answered by an automated system and you're kinda being guided by a robot on what to do and the next step to do and press two for whatever. So it's very easy to be tricked by that, to give away your PayPal password. But uh, I wasn't tricked. So while this technology is mind-blowing and could be very useful in the future, the security concern is real and legitimate. Let me know what you think about Google Duplex and the general direction that artificial intelligence is heading. It's not available for anyone at the moment. It's still in the production stages. So it might be one or two years before we actually see it in our smartphones and in our smart speakers but still let me know what you would like to see implemented what your security concerns are let me know what you think about artificial intelligence so good that human beings are communicating with them and they're not able to distinguish whether they're talking to a robot or a human being let me know in the comment section below anyway that's it for now and um hey chris don't forget to tell them subscribe <laughs> you had her don't forget subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next one